Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to introduce you to Spring Cloud AWS project and show you how to create a Spring Boot application that integrates with AWS. So first of all, what is Spring Cloud AWS? Of course, it's a part of Spring Cloud Umbrella project and it's meant to simplify consuming AWS services in Spring application through providing well-known Spring idioms like uh, listener-based annotations or auto configurations for uh, certain AWS services. As you probably know, AWS has a list of over 100 services. So obviously we are not really able to cover all of them, but we have a, like a short list of the most frequently used AWS services that we believe you could benefit from. So Spring Cloud AWS comes with integration with CloudFormation, EC2, S3, RDS, meaning the relational database service, so the service that provides you PostgreSQL, MySQL, with Elastic Cache, so it also can configure caching for Memcache or Redis that is managed on AWS, and also for SQS, which is a queuing system, SNS notification service, SES for sending emails, and also obtaining configurations from Parameter Store and Secrets Manager. The thing is, you don't have to use all of them. Spring Cloud AWS is modular, so you can just pick only the modules that you are interested in. And this is mostly true because some services come like out of the box and you have to turn it, them off, but we are working on them to make it more explicit. Something that I believe you should know is that currently Spring Cloud AWS is uh, under heavy development. We are working on making this getting started experience smoother and we are also changing a lot how these integrations work because we have learned already from the community how they how they use Spring Cloud AWS, how they use these AWS services. And some of the assumptions that we had at the beginning of the project were not true anymore. So we are adapting to it. Okay, so before you before we start creating a new project, you should have AWS account and you should also have AWS CLI configured on your machine, meaning that if you go to your terminal and you can type AWS, something actually happens, right? And you can verify if the configuration is correct by executing some, let's say, read operation, like list, uh, listing all the S3 buckets. So we can type just AWS S3 LS, and you should get the list of buckets. If this is the case, then it means that we can continue with creating a Spring Boot application. If it's not the case, it would be nice if you could configure AWS CLI and you will find the link in the description on how to do it. Okay, so let's now create a new Spring Boot application. So we go to start.spring.io and keep in mind, I'm recording this at the beginning of August, 2020. The latest Spring Boot version is 2.3.2 and the latest Spring Cloud is Hoxton SR7. So if you're late watching this later in the future, just make sure that uh, there is no update to this video. So you look into the comments because we will change some things and maybe some things will not be uh, relevant anymore. Okay, so we need to add a dependency to Spring Cloud AWS. So you can just search by typing AWS and currently we only want to add AWS core. I will show how this integration with other services look like later in the in the future in other videos. So we just select the AWS core and we open the project in your IDE. So the first thing to check is if it includes the latest Spring Cloud, because I know that SR7 has been released a few days ago, but start.spring.io still pre-configures, I'm not sure why, only SR6. So we want to use the latest Spring Cloud AWS, so I will just change it to SR7, refresh the Maven config so that it fetches the dependencies. And now theoretically, if we run this application, it should work, right? Since we have this AWS CLI configured. Unfortunately, this is not the case. There are a couple of steps we have to make to configure Spring Cloud AWS. Ideally, in the future, you will not have to do it, uh, but that's unfortunately the case right now. So first of all, we have to tell uh, Spring Cloud AWS to use the def default credentials provider. Credentials provider is a concept in AWS SDK that it can fetch the credentials configuration from different places in order to authenticate requests that go to AWS. 
Spring Cloud AWS by default assumes that you are running on an EC2 instance and it can fetch these credentials from the EC2 instance metadata. But of course, we are currently not running on EC2 instance, I'm running it on my local machine. So instead, we can tell Spring Cloud AWS to use the default credentials provider chain from the AWS SDK, and it will change it in a way that it will try to look in the EC2 metadata, but it will also try to look into your local configuration. So the thing that you have in your dot credentials file. And the way to do it is to use the property use default AWS credentials and change it to true. And the same applies for the region. So we need to set it to use default AWS region chain. One more thing is uh, that Spring Cloud AWS assumes that you are running inside CloudFormation stack, which is a common setup for production but it's also not the case for us. It's also not the case if you are just not using CloudFormation. Maybe you are just deploying your applications manually or you use Terraform. There are many cases when the CloudFormation is not really used. And currently we just need to change this property that we don't run on CloudFormation stack. This will again change in the future. In the future, we want to make it uh, as an opt-in option. There are two more things, unfortunately, that we don't really have control over. AWS SDK logs some warning messages that look very scary, but actually you don't really have to care about them. And we have to turn off these warning messages by changing the uh, logging uh, for few classes to error. Now, if we run the application, it will be already working fine, but the startup time takes a couple of seconds, which of course should not be the case. And the thing is that Spring Cloud AWS pre-configures a fetching instance metadata from the EC2 instance. And if it fails to fetch them, then nothing really happens, but it tries to, to do it a couple of times, which again takes a couple of seconds. If you are either running it locally or you are not interested in this metadata, you can turn it off by excluding uh, auto configuration. And again, this is something that we will change in the future so that you don't really have to make this step. So now if we run it, uh, the application will start and nothing will happen, but it will also not log any errors or exceptions. So basically what we would normally expect. So what do we have at this stage? At this stage, once we included the core dependency, Spring Cloud AWS pre-configures, for example, the S3 client. So in without any bean, adding any extra bean, uh, we can use, for example, list S3 bucket. So let's add the application runner. Let's inject S3 dependency and list all the S3 buckets on the application startup. If this works for you, it means that you are at the point where you can start integrating uh, other Spring Cloud AWS modules like the one for messaging, SQS and SNS or with RDS. I will show you how to do them in the next videos. I would like to go through each one of them, also pointing out the good parts of it and also the bad parts of it that we are working on. So I just hope that video was somehow useful for you and, I, and I'm looking forward to see you in the next video.